So Style 52 is a diversity-focused accelerator um, with a mission to empower entrepreneurs from what we call untapped communities. And by untapped, we mean women, people of color, LGBTQIA founders, veterans, seniors, founders with disability, immigrants, right? So we usually say, if you feel like you don't belong, you actually belong with us. And the reason why we saw the need to create a tech accelerator like Startup 52 was we found out that there were so many entrepreneurs who had brilliant ideas um, but lacked the access to resources and capital um, to succeed. Um, so we, we felt that it, it was pertinent. You, the United States is a very diverse country. Diversity is very profitable. Um, so we were missing out on not empowering these entrepreneurs. That was how South 52 was born. When we started working with entrepreneurs uh, from inner city communities, so this connected youth, foster care, formerly incarcerated, uh, we focused a lot more on small business entrepreneurship, which is not bad in itself, except that we realized that you could own a small business and for 10, 20 years, you know, not even crack a million dollars in revenue. However, when you talk about tech entrepreneurship, you start to talk about the Facebooks, the Amazon, and you also start to realize that the world's richest people are people who have made money from tech entrepreneurship. And then the question was, why is it that, one, we don't talk about entrepreneurship enough in our communities, in minority communities? And two, when we do, we tend to focus on small business entrepreneurship, which, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. But in order for communities to thrive, you know, economically, we have to look beyond that, right, to embrace tech entrepreneurship, to encourage our children to learn how to code, to embrace STEM, um, and to start, of course, businesses. I spent five years studying biomedical engineering, designing a whole bunch of stuff, artificial hearts and all this stuff, but nobody taught me how to monetize those skill sets. Every semester, pretty much, you found every single career fair to go beg someone to hire you, right? Without understanding the power you had with the skill sets you had already learned. And when you actually look at unemployment and un underemployment rates, we still have the highest of those rates. So it means people are actually not even employing us, right? So why not teach our children or teach ourselves to learn to create stuff? That's how I pivoted from small business entrepreneurship into tech entrepreneurship. And when we'd sample this, you know, some of the kids we worked with, um, we thought them both, actually. You had kids who did not know what the word entrepreneurship meant when they came into the program. This was as a nonprofit. And by the end, we're pitching apps and, you know, tech stuff, right? Um, so it wasn't about not knowing or not being brilliant enough. It was just not having the opportunity, right? Not being exposed to knowing what to do or how to do it or the access to, being, to becoming successful in these fields. Until we start to focus on tech entrepreneurship, um, we may still have a long way to go when we talk about economic wealth. My father actually, well, my parents have been entrepreneurs. Every summer we had to go work. <laughs> I had to go work for my father's uh, uh, corporation, which was tech-focused as well. As a college student, I had gotten into this fellowship Colin Powell Leadership Fellowship that was focused on public policy. Um, and I decided to focus on youth disconnection. I didn't understand why young people like me at the time were not in school and didn't work. Many of them stood on the street corners and did what they had to do to survive. Um, so I decided to study that. Um, and for several years, you know, worked with them, volunteered with nonprofits that were focused on youth between the ages of 16 and about 25. And from working with them and getting to know them, I began to realize many of these young people had m better skills at you know, business than you and I could ever have, you know? Um, and I, I felt like the solutions that were being provided, whether it was GD or menial job placements, were not sufficient enough, right? Um, how do we capitalize on these skill sets that they have to empower them? If we teach these people how to create their own stuff, the stuff they are passionate about, stuff they are interested in, maybe, just maybe, you know, you can pivot that interest in 
whatever it was. It wasn't that they, w they were not interested in doing stuff legally. It was just that nobody was giving them that opportunity. Some of them who were formerly incarcerated couldn't get back into school or couldn't get a job because of their you know, records, but had kids to take care of or families to cater to. So for them, it was the only way out. Nobody ever told them, hey, you know, that passion you have for music or that passion you have for fashion, you can actually create something out of this for yourself that doesn't need to send you back. By creating that entrepreneurial alternative, the hope was this would become a distraction from what we're already doing. And it worked for a bunch of them. Entrepreneurship um, is an economic weapon, in my opinion. Diversity is a social weapon. Entrepreneurship has the power to change the class, classism and all of the issues that well, not all, but most of the issues we face. Access and power has a way of doing that. Diversity, on the other hand, exposes you and I to people whom you normally would not be comfortable with or you normally would not know anything about and starts to break down those walls. Usually when you talk about diversity in tech especially, people think you're trying to preach a charitable you know, message um, and while that is great, it is charitable, and I think that's important, um, but it's also very profitable, and we tend to miss that. Diversity drives innovation um, that yields positive outcomes, a successful outcome. I grew up in Nigeria, right? And the one thing that my parents made sure we understood was you, you cannot stand alone. Community is extremely important. I'm one of six children, but, but there was almost never a time when it was just six of us. There were cousins, there were you know, friends. You know, some, at some point, we were like 30 kids in the house. And we learned to coexist. Right? What I didn't know, somebody else, someone else knew and helped me out, and vice versa. When I came to America, I was no longer just another boy from Nigeria. I became a black man, right? I didn't, I didn't even know I was black until I came to America. Right? Because where I came from, we never had those, those discussions. Social justice was something that I sort of embraced from that, from learning that, wait, in this new society, this is now part of my identity. And all my life, you know, I've always known that I am not better than anyone, just like no one is better than myself. So the, the segregation was something that shook my everything, right? So I... I embraced that need to speak up for the person who could not. Not because I was better privileged than they are, no, but because I'm hoping that tomorrow, you know, for my kids, somebody else will be able to do that. Someone can create an opportunity for them that they may not have. So I think that whole sense of community, of making sure that I don't look away when someone else is being oppressed. That pretty much has defined everything that I see the rest of my life becoming.